Merry Meet. Welcome back. I sure hope you're enjoying all of the training. And uh, we've got <laughs> a lot to do. And I want to get to all of your questions or as many of your questions as I can today. If I don't answer your question on the podcast, um, it's because I'm probably I just didn't organize myself well enough. So email me back again. Um, or email it onto the forum and make sure that you let me know that you want it taken care of on the podcast and I will, I will answer it. And it's nothing personal. It's just sometimes I just don't, I don't get to everything the way I, I would like to. All right. So last week we started some more intensive training. I, I would I think you would uh, tend to agree with me on that. And we were working on the fire body. And before we go any further, I want to just talk about that. And we're going to be, like I said, this uh, starting last week, there was a five-week process of, of somewhat of a boot camp training. You do not have to complete all of this in five weeks. You can take as long as you want to, all right? And I would recommend that you take this I, the whole the whole thing the whole podcast I'd ra- I'd recommend that you take it in order start at lesson one and and it's fine to listen to whatever podcasts that you want any episodes that you want but as far as doing the actual training take it in order and that includes where we are now build your fire body somewhat it doesn't have to be perfect nothing has to be absolutely perfect to work but 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 you'll know you'll know if you've given it a a, a pretty good building and and you'll know whether you're ready to move on and once you felt like you you've given a good week or so of building that fire body then move on to today's lesson on the water body the other thing to remember too is and i always say this and i want to reiterate please keep a light touch please have fun. This is fun. This is magic. It's not supposed to be hard and and it's it's not a thing to beat ourselves up with. This is this is enjoyable. It's it's where you go for a repose from all of the mortal world. So you, your magic should be something that you enjoy, that you look forward to. It can be very challenging. That's fine. But be careful that you're not beating yourself up with it. All right, so let's get right to some of these uh, questions. And we had a lot, (laughs) both on the forum and through the emails. Uh, This was a a pretty intense week for many of you, and I, I applaud you. This is not easy stuff. Remember, what we're doing here is we are building your power base in this whole training There's so many different ways to do what we're doing. There's many different traditions. But be aware that with the advent of the Internet, it's a double-edged sword, the Internet, because there's so much available to us, which is great. But it's also easy to make us prone to dabbling. And dabblers don't get very far, especially in the craft. So... What I would recommend, again, everything I say is just a recommendation. It's from my point of view. I am not the witch king, okay? There's no, I have no authority. I have no power over you. Do what you want to do. Do what your gut tells you. Your own authority is internal. But this is my recommendation based on all of my years of of working. Find a system that you feel comfortable with and stick with it for at least a little while before you start mixing and matching because there's something to be said for walking a path and treading a path for a while and building up some power it's just like you know eventually you you want to mix things up that's fine but uh if if you were if you were in a let's say a cooking school You'd want to master. You'd want to master the basics before you started dabbling with different types of of cuisine. You'd want to have some sort of foundation. So I recommend if you like this training, if you like this particular system that I'm presenting to you, it's not the only thing out there. There's a lot of good systems out there. But if you like it, stick with it for a while. Go go ahead and go through the lessons. We'll probably have, mm, I'd say, fifteen to twenty lessons before. 
I would say it's a, it's a good idea for you to 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 move on and, and and start experimenting with other things. Again, I'm not trying to be dogmatic here. This is the this is the no dogma zone. But just as far as what works, stick with something for a while and build your muscles, build your magical muscles and then go out and start trying different things. All right. So anyway, let's get to these these questions. Okay, Midnight, who is one of our founding members on our forum, and she's always got a lot of great stuff to say. She asks, should the athame be consecrated first before doing the building the fire body? Well, that's a good question. You know, it's a good idea to consecrate all of your tools prior to using them, but we're not using them. When I said to meditate with your athame, it wasn't so that you could um, put any energy through the athame. You're not actually directing energy with your athame this week. Uh, it's just so that you could start to connect with the athame and that you can connect your athame with fire and with your will. So, if you don't have your athame consecrated, this is what you could do. You could cleanse it just with salt and water, fire and air. And, you know, we just pass it through some incense smoke and sprinkle some salt and water on it. Say a little chant such as salt and water by casting thee, no spell nor adverse purpose be, except in true accord with me, as my will so mote it be. Very common chant. Wave it through the incense smoke. Fire and air, this charge I lay, no spell nor adverse purpose stay around this place, night nor day. Hear my words, attend to me as my will, so mote it be. Very normal uh, chant. You don't even have to say anything. You can just say, I cleanse this athame with fire and air and with salt and water. That all energy be perfect love, perfect trust and in true accord with me. So mode it be just to cleanse it if you haven't consecrated it yet and then meditate with it for uh, every day for a week while you're building your fire body just so that you can start to associate the athame with fire before you use your athame for magical work. Yes, you want to consecrate it. So I hope that answers that question. Uh, let's see who else. Oh, OK. Could we have Phoenix Rain asks a question. Oh, this is a good one. In building my fire body, I have encountered my quote cycle in that that thing in my life that I encounter over and over again and will probably continue forever until I figure out what the lesson is out of the problem. With almost everything, I jump in head first, explosive. I make huge promises to myself, usually things that seem, quote, reasonable at the time but are not. I seem to set myself up to fail because in my mind, the bigger the, quote, risk, the bigger the success, right? Wrong. What ends up is, I ha is happening is that I fail inevitably. And I beat myself up. Then I go eat something I shouldn't after quitting whatever it was that I was doing. I.e., if it's not perfect, I tend to quit and try again later. That is so great. Phoenix Rain, you are in the biggest club I've ever met. I've, I've ever known. We all do that. Many of us, I should say. I don't know everybody, but but many people I know, and myself included, do that. We we, we get these big ideas and we set ourselves up for failure. Remember, when we're doing that will list for the fire body week, you don't need, it doesn't matter what's on the list. What matters is that you complete what's on the list. So be very, very honest with yourself. Put stuff on there that you know you're going to be capable of of tackling that week. You don't need to move mountains this week. You just need to get in the habit of when I say I'm going to do something, it's going to happen. That's the idea. So if you're if the thing on your list was I want to to clean up, this is what I put on the on the forum in response to that too, that I'm going to clean out the garage, and you know that's too big of a task for you, and and you don't think that's going to happen. 
then just say, I'm going to clean out this drawer in the garage, or I'm going to sweep off the, the doormat in the garage, something that you know you can do. Start small, baby, baby steps. Start small and then build from there. So when you're building your magical will, it's very important to use things that are not a big stretch for you, that you can just get in the habit of saying, oh, I get it. When I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. And if you're not, if you, if you don't, think you're going to commit to be able to commit to doing a particular thing, don't commit to doing that. Hopefully that helps. I had a teacher once who taught me the what she called the power of something. And that is that instead of promising ourselves that we're going to do everything, we promise ourselves that we're going to do something. So instead of instead of saying I'm going to go to the gym and work out for 90 minutes, we say I'm going to do five sit-ups today. See what I mean? So if you did five sit-ups every day, for a week, you would get a lot farther than promising yourself that you're going to go to the gym for 90 minutes and then maybe you don't make it or or you sabotage that or you try it once and then you don't get back there again and then you end up eating the ice cream because you feel so bad about yourself. So instead of doing, trying to do everything, just try to do something and don't worry about whether it's perfect or not. In fact, with this whole thing with this whole training don't worry about perfection who cares if you if you get it perfect it's just an exercise it's not it's not a life or death situation so always again keep a light touch have fun but be be serious also there's a there's a there's a balance that we're striving we want to be serious about this so that we we get good results but we also want to enjoy ourselves all right let's see what else Um, all right, Silverthorn has a kind of a long email here, so I'm going to just see if I can burn it down a little bit. Uh, it's talking about trying to get the concentration exercise working and says that once he was able to get some tools, like some, an altar and some candles and things, that he noticed that he was able to concentrate better. And he says, from everything I've ever heard about the craft, the tools are only recommended, but I've always thought that I could do without them. So I guess my question is, why was there such a big difference? Are tools that important or am I missing something? Well, they are that important. The reason why I'm so adamant about the fact that the the tools are not necessary is because I want to be very clear that the tools are not the source of your power, but they are extremely important in, in helping to objectify that power, to train the mind, and in order to be able to understand what you're working with. Just like any craft, tools are very important. But the tools themselves are not the source of our power. Our power is within us, and the tools help us to direct that power. So I recommend that you get your tools. And again, if you're in a a situation where secrecy is very important, then let your tools be very nondescript. But to have some tools, definitely, you want to have at least the basics, an athame, a chalice, a thurible, um, a book of shadows, a pentacle, maybe even a want. So uh, the, the very important that we have, in, if possible, an altar. And again, the altar does not have to call it, draw attention to itself. It can just be a, a little space that, you, that you're able to put up when you're, when you're doing your work. A placemat is great. Just a, just have a little, maybe a little basket or box or drawer or something where you where you have your things, and then you pull out your placemat and you put it on whatever that little place is that you've set aside, and you set maybe some candles up in your altar, and and absolutely, it's much easier to focus properly if you have the tools. But let's be really clear again: don't obsess over having perfect tools either. Just start with what you can use for the time being and and let your craft evolve as it will. It doesn't have to be anything ornate. It doesn't have to be anything expensive. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to hand forge your athame. You do not have to whittle your own pentacle. I mean, that's fine if you want to make your own tools. I think it's beautiful. And of course, there's going to be special power in doing that. But if you don't have the wherewithal or the talent or the desire to do that, you can buy these things. 
you can buy little things or, or you can create them out of something that's already at your home. We have a lot of really great people on our forum. And if you are not a member or are not posting regularly, I invite you to do so. And it's, uh, it's a great meeting place and it's a wonderful place to discuss all of these topics. All right. So today we're going to start building the water body. Now, be sure that you've done a good fair amount of work on the fire body before you start working on the water body. I, I, I like you to do these things in order. I like the fire body to be built somewhat. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it ha have gone through seven days of working your will and, and do some of the concentration exercises. And hopefully you've been doing some physical exercise this week. If you haven't, get that going. Get all that stuff going before you, before you do commit a, a week to do working the, the water body. All right. So if you need to revisit last week's podcast, do so. And of course, just listen to, to this podcast all you want. But before you start working this, I recommend that you feel like you've completed somewhat the building of your fire body. All right, so the water body is anchored to the side of the pyramid that we call faith. So remember, the, the fire body was anchored to will, and the water body is anchored to faith. The water body is obviously feminine, and it represents the emotions. And the tool for the water is the chalice. It's important when working magic that we have faith, that we have faith that's very deeply seated in our being, especially when we're working any kind of spell work. We have to know that it's going to occur. We have to have utmost faith that it's going to occur. It's interesting. There is no such thing as a faithless person. Everybody has faith in something. Even an atheist has faith in maybe science, right? You've got a lot of, a lot of times people put, put faith in, in fear. A lot of people put faith in advertising. You know what you put your faith into because it's where you feel your power comes from. So it's important that we start to take note of where we are placing our faith. What do we believe in? What do we believe in about ourselves? What do we believe in about the world? It's very important also that we are in tune with our emotions because emotions represent energy. It's power. It's deep-seated power. Emotional power is magical power. And a lot of us are divorced from our emotions and we're cut off from our feeling our emotions. And a lot of our emotions are not free-flowing. And think of the water, a water body. When, when a river is flowing, it's clear. It's, it, it's self-cleansing. When it's dammed up somewhere, the water starts to stagnate. So we want our water body to be free-flowing. So part of what we're going to work on this week is getting in touch with our emotions, getting in touch with the deeper part of our being. So one thing that I want you to do this week is to take out your grimoire, to take out your book of shadows or just any piece of paper is fine, and to start writing down not what you're thinking, but what you're feeling. Where do you feel it in your body? What does it feel like? And do that every day. Start making very, very deep inquiries into what you're feeling at any given moment, at least once a day. Another aspect of the water body that's very important is we want to start to get in touch with our dream world, where we are in our unconscious state, in our dream state, our nocturnal state. So, if you, you can use your regular book of shadows or you can get a separate book that we will call a dream journal or a dream diary. And I want you to keep that by the side of your bed. And before you go to sleep, I want you to just gently tell 
yourself, tell your mind, tell your water, your, your emerging water body that you want to remember your dreams. And if you don't think that you can remember your dreams, that's fine. I want you to do that anyway. Keep that little journal at your bedside. And the first thing you do when you wake up is you write down what it is that you were dreaming. If you do not remember what you were dreaming, write down, I do not remember what I was dreaming. But do write something down. You might find that throughout the day you get little flashes of a dream that you had the night before. Try to do your best, even if you don't have your dream journal with you, jot it down somewhere, leave yourself a voicemail, do something, and then enter it into your dream journal when you can. Now, last week for your meditational type of activity, we were working on concentration. And just to remind her that, that the fire body of last week was a, was a body of projection. The water body is a body of magnetism. So instead of being projective, we are being magnetic this week. All right, so now during the meditative part of your work last week, we, we had you try to do some exercises in concentration. During the meditative portion of your work this week every day, we want you to work on relaxation. And when you're doing the relaxation, relaxing your body, you want to make sure that you are in tune with your feelings as much as possible. Find the energy in the body, find the feeling, find the emotion. It doesn't matter whether you perceive the emotion as positive, negative, pleasant, or unpleasant. Find it. Find what the emotion is. Find where it is in the body and relax into the feeling. Become aware. Remember that as you're doing this, you're unlocking your power. You are setting that water body into motion. And we want free-flowing emotion. So... For as long as you can, maybe up to 20 minutes if you can do it, even if, if, it's, if it's only five minutes a day, that's fine. To close your eyes, relax your body, obviously take a few deep breaths. We're not going to go into a lot of breathing type of work this week, but, but breathe just to facilitate the relaxation of your body and relax and be very aware of your emotions as much as you possibly can. It doesn't matter what you're feeling, just feel it. And relax and soften into that feeling, become more and more aware of your feelings. So that's your meditation this week, is to relax and notice your emotions. You're going to be doing your dream journal, which we've discussed. And like I said, I want you to start to make some lists about your emotions and also uh, journal about your beliefs. Now, this is a very interesting exercise. And, and if you can even do this maybe a, a couple minutes a day, um, you're going you're gonna to find some fascinating insights about yourself. Look at your life. Look at all the areas of your life. Do some positive and some not so positive, some, some things that you enjoy about your life and some things that you're not so happy about your life. Just take note of those things and ask yourself, what would a person have to believe in order to have these situations in their lives? What kinds of beliefs would a person have to have in order to have these situations in their lives? Start to look at your belief systems. What do I believe? So what do I believe about money? What do I believe about relationships? What do I believe about God? What do I believe about the craft? What do I believe about magic? What do I believe about science? What do I believe about my health? What are my beliefs? What do I really believe? And just just take note of your beliefs. Try not to edit it. We're not we're not here this week to to try to analyze our dreams. We're not trying to analyze our emotions. We're not trying to analyze our beliefs. We're trying to become aware of what they are. 
So in building the water body, remember, it's not so much an act of will as it was last week, as it's an act of unfoldment, an act of awareness, an act of discovery. We want to start to open the dam. We're trying to soften the dam for that emotional body to start flowing forth. Now, I would like for you to do your best to maintain the exercise portion of last week, doing the physical exercise, doing some sort of physical exercise. We need to keep that going because we want to add the element of water to the element of fire. We don't want to stop what you were doing completely. So you can even still work a little bit on your on your will if you want to. It's just you're not going to be focusing on that as your main as your as your main objective this week. You can still work on on your will lists as as you want to, but your main objective this week is to unblock the water body, to unblock the water body. Now I want you to also, like I said, to to maintain the physical exercise. That's one thing that I, that I don't want you to to stop doing. And the one thing I want you to add to that and throughout your day is I want you to actually increase your water intake, actually increase the amount of water that you drink. I can't tell you what that's supposed to look like for you. I mean, there's all kinds of different theories about what you should do. I've heard that you're supposed to take your body weight and double it and drink that much in ounces. I've, I've heard that you should drink eight glasses of water a day. I've heard that you should once a day be able to urinate clear. There's all kinds of theories and opinions about this. But what I want you to do is I want you to increase your water intake. And here's something that you can do also. Bless or consecrate the water at least once a day before you drink it. That means that you just relax your body, relax your mind, Place the palms of your hands over the glass of water or the container of water before you drink it, right before you drink it, and say, I bless this water with perfect love and perfect trust, blessed be, or something to that effect. It can be, let the light of love and trust be present here and now within this water, and then drink it. All right, so this is a little different week than it was last week. Last week was a very active week. This is a very magnetic week. This is a week of discovery. So let's recap. You're going to be working your dream journal this week, discovering your dreams. Don't analyze your dreams. I don't want I don't want to get into all that stuff. Just you're just becoming acquainted with your dream world. If you're not already, just introduce yourself. Keep track of what those dreams are. We're not here to analyze them. This is not psychoanalysis. This is not dream analysis. This is magic. (laughs) Uh, Then also I want you to do, for your meditation, I want you to relax into your emotions. Become aware of your emotions and relax into them. Find out where they are in your body, what you're feeling, how you're feeling it. I want you to journal on your emotions and I want you to journal on your beliefs. What do I believe? So there's several ways that you can do this. Just to recap, you can just say that, what do I believe about this? What do I believe about that? What do I believe about this? Or you can take it more objectively. Sometimes this is very helpful. Look at your life, look at the the situations in your life and say, what would a person have to believe in order to have this sort of thing be in their life? Hopefully that makes some sense. While you're doing your meditations, I would recommend that you work with your chalice and you can hold your chalice in your hands if you want to. But since this is a real relaxation uh, exercise, you may want to just place the chalice with water in it on your altar and gaze into the chalice during some or all of your meditation. And you can gaze into your chalice with partially opened eyes or you can close your eyes and reopen them every so often. You may even see some visions in the water in your chalice. All right, so have a good time with uh, discovering and undamming your water body this week. And we want to um, start to use all of this water stuff in order to become aware of your faith. So that's from, from a practical perspective, we want to know 
where your faith lies so that we can start to have your faith be geared toward you and your magic. See, because what happens is when you do a spell, you can't hope it happens. You can't hope that it comes true. You can't, it's not about wishing. You've, you've discovered that your will is so strong because of what you did in building your will that you can have faith in yourself, that you can have faith in your magic, that what you say is going to happen. And so that you have an emotional security that your fire body can, can, will things to happen so that your emotional body can give the magnetic energy necessary to draw those things unto you. So these things are working in tandem here. Get clear as to where your emotional body is, your water body, so that we can start to build a faith that is as deep as the ocean. You have faith that the sun will come up tomorrow. You have faith that the sun will set at night. You have faith that the oxygen that you breathe will nourish the the blood in your bloodstream. You have to have that kind of faith without even thinking about it, that your money spell is going to happen, that your love spell is going to happen, that your health spell is going to happen. That's what this is all about. So this emotional body, this water body, is the, is the cornerstone of your faith. So have a good time with this this week. I'm sure we'll hear a lot about it on the forum. And if you're not on the forum, we hope that you do join us because we are really enjoying everything that everybody's writing and discussing. Until next week, love and many blessings. Blessings.